klik kalau yang uh, uh, as long as you are in UATM buat uh, DPIM memang these are the materials that you are going to look at like uh, for three years ok um, mana pula pergi ni tadi eh mana tadi ah, ni. ok so rubber there are several things that we are going to go over uh, daripada macam just like uh, oil palm introduction morphology soil variety propagation nursery maknanya habis daripada kelas ni mungkin kau orang dah boleh dah pandai lah kot tanam sikit kot <coughs> ok so um, macam biasa heavy abrosidensis uh, heavy abrosidensis ni kalau boleh you kena tahu nama dia asal usul dia daripada brazil ok nama heavy tu kena tahu eja and then uh, uh, and then some of the terms that you need to know rubble lump Rubber lump tu maksud dia yang yang uh, bila uh, you bubu apa tu? Uh, cup lump. Cup lump tu, <coughs> lump tu maksud dia gumpalan. Lump tu, sekejap. Lump, lump tu yang bonjol tu. Uh, cup, cup tu cawan. So, bonjol cawan maknanya bila you curahkan uh, susu getah dalam cawan tu, bila you keluarkan dia akan jadi cup lump uh, bila dia dah keras. So, we call it uh, cup lump. Okay. So basically we have it in tropical countries. Oh, dah menangis pula. Okay, so ini tak apalah kita just uh, pass saja. Ini ini you boleh baca lah ni macam ni. Okay. Okay, so yang ni <coughs> tak apalah ni abaikan lah ini. Kita, kita history-history ni kita abaikan je. So ada pre-industry. Okay, so ada pre-industrial phase and dulu-dulu. So, so basically, um, uh, getah ni apa yang penting adalah nenek-nenek kita dulu. Nenek saya lah especially. Mungkin nenek korang uh, usahakan benda lain kot. Uh, um, cara orang me mendapatkan rezeki is by, uh, by rubber tapping. Okay, so uh, bau dia agak busuk sikit. Tapi memang itulah sumber rezeki orang dulu-dulu. Bangun pukul 4 pagi, masuk dalam hutan, menore and that's what they do. Uh, in uh, in the, I think it's in 50s kot 50s, 40s, macam tu lah so <coughs> awal lah dia orang bangun cuma satu je yang saya masih wonder dah sampai sekarang dia orang tak ada jumpa hantu yang dalam tu macam pelik masuk dalam hutan ke empat pagi <coughs> so um, so okay ada phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 establishment and the emergence of synthetic rubber as competitor so masalah uh, some of the problems today is uh, kita ada masalah Sintetik rubber sebagai competitor So macam apa yang menyebabkan kita susah sikit sekarang ni Adalah bila berlawan dengan uh, dengan sintetik rubber Kita dah uh, problem lah okay, in, in our production So sebab tu uh, and then harga dia pun jadi turun Dan ramai orang pun dah tutup dia punya ladang getah And then instead of uh, buat ladang getah Dia buat ladang kelapa sawit Sebab dia rasa uh, getah ni dah tak boleh menampung kehidupan tak tak memberikan keuntungan so uh, rubber is one of the most interesting and most important raw material so natural rubber comes from the juice of a tree and uh, synthetic rubber tu synthetic lah tiruan so <coughs> natural rubber ni yang you buat tayar tu saya tak tahu kenapa kita punya tayar ni kita tak boleh buat tayar yang macam power macam continental michelin and all sebab <coughs> sebenarnya rubber kita bagus tapi hmm, Another thing is rubber kita, kita export. Contohnya kita export ke Singapore untuk buat gloves and uh, condom eh. Tapi yang yang pelik, yang saya pelik eh, kita hantar ke sana buat glove and all. Lepas tu hantar balik ke sini. So which is weird. We have, we have, we uh, the rubber is ours but we don't make it. So agak pelik sikit situ. <coughs> So, uh, latex is made basically the milky sap. Yeah, bila you potong potong pokok tu, dia akan keluar benda getah putih tu. Sebenarnya dia, bila you potong uh, getah tu sebenarnya dia punya natural protection. Dia macam kalau kita, kita kalau you potong kulit daging you, you akan terkeluar darah. And dia ni pula akan keluar getah sebab getah tu nanti akan jadi benda yang keraskan uh, bahagian yang luka tu. Dia akan tutup tak bagi bakteria masuk. So, itu that's why they produce uh, rubber. Okay. Hmm. So, cara memotong getah ni, uh, bila bila pokok tu dah sampai satu girth, G-I-R-T-H, bila, bila they have uh, achieved certain girth, uh, girth is uh, ukur lilit, barulah uh, you boleh toreh pokok tu. Kalau dia punya, uh, kalau you peluk dia tu, 
dia punya ukur lilit tu tak sampai lagi, dia tak boleh toreh. So, it has to achieve certain, uh, uh, apa ni? Uh, girth in order for you to cut uh, for a spiral groove. The spiral tu yang berpusing-pusing tu lah. You pusing, you, you toreh tu, ikut spiral dia tu, dekat bug tu and then you boleh collect dia punya milk. So, um, uh, basically, uh, natural rubber contains 30 to 35 rubber and the rest is water. Okay, so... 30% saja rubber. So dia okay like you so like you know dia macam itulah uh, elastic and tight water resistant. And and sekarang juga uh, kadang-kadang uh, macam ada orang dulu-dulu bila dia dah, dia ada kebun getah, lepas tu dia tinggal je. Sebab dia rasa macam tak untung. So dia tinggal je, tiba-tiba dia datang balik tengok dah dah hilang dia punya pokok getah. It is because uh, rubber plant is also now uh, an important source of timber wood. Kadang-kadang you pergi kedai perabot and you tengok dia punya perabot tu. Dia macam kalau ke, ke, uh, apa ni getah punya pokok, uh, pokok kalau dia buat meja, you boleh tengok beza dia tu lain. Dia macam ada bulat-bulat dekat atas meja tu. So basically they use it for uh, timber woods okay, untuk buat perabot. After 25 years of latex extraction, the trunk of the tree is used for furniture production and the branches are used for fiber board. So, bila dia dah tak economic lagi, dia akan tebang and buat uh, perabot lah. Okay. So, uh, macam oil palm, rubber tree may live for 100 years or even more, but its uh, economic uh, life period is uh, around, only around 32 years, macam, lebih kurang macam oil palm. Lepas daripada tu, dia dah tak produce rubber sangat. Dia cuma ada, dia hidup, cuma dia tak produce as much of... Uh, uh, rubber as it used to. <coughs> okay, so ni uh, this is the classification. So you boleh tahu. Uh, next one and major uh, rubber producing countries are Indonesia. Okay, and then followed by Thailand and Malaysia. Malaysia is number three. So maknanya banyak juga lah satu ton, satu metric ton. Kita tulis pula dia punya uh, unit kat sini. Okay, and next one, uh, consumption by product sectors. So, ni lam, yang paling lama. Rasanya you boleh pergi dekat Department of Statistics tengok yang paling baru. Ni 2005 sangat lama. So, it's uh, uh, actually banyak jugalah buat tayar, buat general rubber goods such as uh, gloves. So, sekarang ni kalau musim COVID mungkin saya rasa boleh meningkatkan hasil rubber untuk buat glove. So, morphology, rasanya semua orang dah tahu. Um, ini kita just pass saja. Okay, ini, ini rupa daun getah. Dia tinggi, pokok dia tinggi. If In case siapa yang tak pernah, yang tak ada kampung, orang KL kan katakan. Ataupun orang, orang-orang uh, belah-belah selangor yang tak ada sangat pokok getah. So, this is how it looks like. Mungkin ada orang tak pernah tengok biji getah. So, dia punya daun tu trifoliate. Maknanya ada tiga daun, ok, tiga daun and then arranged in spiral spiral tu berpusing and then uh, macam tu lah ok, okay so itu bunga bunga getah and then kalau siapa biasa pergi ladang getah sometimes you boleh jumpa biji getah biji getah yang budak-budak suka pungut dan dan buat main lah seronok lah main biji getah ni uh, the flowers are small with no petals ok, large cluster ok and this is uh, biji getah bila dia meletup uh, apa yang interesting is uh, biji getah ni yang ni lah budak-budak suka main yang ni bila dia meletup keluar yang ni and uh, budak akan main ni batu seremban lah apalah sebagainya so it is really interesting okay, so this is the fruit the fruit mungkin uh, saya rasa saya pun tak pernah tengok benda lah ni cuma bila dia meletup ni memang biasalah main kat bawah ni ok and the fruit and seed, um, three loop, yang tadi tu, three loops, ada tiga, with one large seed. And then, upon ripening, bila dia masak, capsule will explode, known as dehiscen. So, dehiscen ni maksudnya buah-buah uh, yang meletup bila dia masak. For example, macam kacang, kacang, uh, uh, contohnya macam kacang, eh? kacang apa ni? Eh? Kacang, okay, katakan kacang botol. Bila dia masak, dia akan kering dan dia terbuka terbuka and you boleh dapatkan dia punya biji tak payah korek-korek. Okay, contoh lain, kacang lah senang. Kacang-kacang okay? lah. Biasanya dia akan terbuka dan meletup. Okay. And, say, and then can send the seed shooting out a long distance. So, uh, the seed can be used as identification of clones budding. Okay, so, 
boleh gunakan CD untuk identify. Okay. Next one. Um, so this is the morphology of the bark. Okay. Ni dia punya kulit. Kulit. Uh, kulit lah. Kulit. Kulit. Uh, kulit kepala. Dia punya kulit pokok. And then bila you toreh dia akan keluar getah. Okay, kat, tapi kalau you tak mahir. Katakan you tak mahir menoreh. Tiba-tiba you main toreh-toreh je. Dia boleh merosakkan pokok. Yang lama-lama pokok tu akan jadi tak produktif. So, maknanya nak 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 toreh ni pun dia memang kena ada timing dia. Kena ada skill dia. You tak boleh main suka hati toreh. Okay, bila you toreh-toreh, lama-lama dia rosak. Lama-lama tak keluar dia punya tak keluar dia punya susu ketah. So, itu uh, sangat merugikan. So, you have to learn how to do it. Uh, the bark is still to dark brown. Okay. Uh, tu tak apalah. Baikkan lah ini. And then uh, you ada hard bark, keras. Okay, dia punya bark ni adalah keras. Contain a lot of uh, latex vessel dalam dia punya bark which is kulit, kulit, kulit kokok ni. Uh, ada banyak latex vessel, ada banyak saliran uh, getah. Then you have soft bark consistent, consisting mainly of vertical rows of sieve tube. Ni kat bahagian dalam dia tu lah. And then you have uh, latissifo in which latex Latex came, came from latex vessel. Okay. So, kita tengok macam mana rupa kat dalam. Ni tu diagram of the bug. Dalam dalam dia punya bug tu. So, you ada latex vessel ring. The cambium. Stone cell. Cock cambium. Cock. So, banyak sangat saluran. Dia macam you imagine ini adalah di, ni, ni adalah you punya tangan. Dalam tu adalah darah-darah um, yang mengalir. So, it is uh, something like that lah. Okay, tak ada banyak. Alright, so um, general characteristic of uh, for a good rubber tree. So, uh, for a good rubber tree, it should have a well anchored root. Uh, akar dia mesti kuat. Okay, trunk mesti lurus, tak boleh singit-singit. Sebab kalau singit, macam mana you nak nak tore? Okay. And then um. Leaf mesti large and resistant to diseases. Tak boleh kena ada penyakit. Kalau penyakit, dia akan tu dah tak banyak, uh, tak bagus lah dia punya getah uh, sikit. Uh, bark, uh, thick, smooth and high latex. And good re recovery. Good recovery maknanya dia cepat baik. Kalau dia tak baik-baik, nanti susah lah you nak toreh lagi. Okay, so dia mesti ada ciri-ciri yang macam tu. Next one, soil and climatic requirement. So, mesti banyak mineral, mesti banyak water, and air, and organic material. So, that is how you have to make sure dia punya tanah. Kadang-kadang okay. kalau you tersalah, if let's say that uh, condition is more suitable for oil pump, tapi, uh, uh, tapi you nak, sorry, kalau tanah tu suitable untuk getah tapi pergi tanam oil palm uh, sebenarnya kadang-kadang takut rugi in the long run so you have to to know which uh, you punya condition tu sesuai untuk uh, pokok apa you have to know which one is which okay next one is solar radiation ini rasanya mana-mana pun okey je kot sebab kita uh, around Malaysia it's about the same uh, condition and then avoid areas prone to strong winds you, uh, tak boleh ada wind sangat Angin. And uh, soil, wide range of adaptability to soil. So, from poor lateritic soil to fertile soil. So, dia punya tanah ni agak bagus. Uh, boleh pilih macam-macam. So, macam tak, tak ni sangat lah. Tak, tak cerewet sangat. And fertility requirement is less demanding than oil palm. So, sebab tu kadang-kadang ada orang dia pergi tanam oil palm dekat tanah yang sesuai dengan, dengan uh, apa ni, getah. So, dia akan rugi sebab Um, getah ni lebih dia kurang tak secerewet macam oil palm so you have to know uh, sesuai ke tak okay. higher yield of latex from more fertile soil if let's say you punya tanah lebih subur that means you akan uh, lebih dapat banyak yield lah and it is preferable to grow rubber on gently undulating land so kalau kalau boleh dia kena tanah yang lapang lah tanah tanah rata yang lapang dan slope dia cerun dia adalah about 30% saja jangan jangan terlalu cerun okay. and then soil mature soil with deep top soil is favorable for rubber and good soil with physical and chemical characteristics and uh, limitation 
soil physical properties uh, kalau let's say ada slope level tu so uh, kalau tanah dia tu pun tak bagus so dia akan ada limitation and then pH CEC uh, CEC ni kalau you belajar soil tu apa gila ingatan buat saya so <coughs> itu pun uh, boleh mempengaruhi nutrient conductivity of electricity conductivity dia tu so dia akan menyebabkan gangguan untuk tanam getah and then kalau marginal soil marginal soil ni tanah yang tak tak subur kalau you ingat from last week okay? dia pun uh, kalau you ada tanah yang tak subur dia akan uh, uh, mempengaruhi juga or probably ada tin tailing tin tailing ni yang bekas-bekas peninggalan uh, uh, tin is timah ok timah <coughs> So, uh, order one, okay. okay. So minor limitation suitable for rubber plantation. Order two, serious limitation and limitation limitation can be corrected. And then if you have uh, order three, very serious limitation and cannot be corrected. So you have to decide. Uh, order of the soil is it okay? Kalau okay boleh repair ke tak? Kalau tak tak payahlah senang cerita. Tanamlah benda lain. Okay. Sebab uh, you are going to plant it for about 30 years. Kalau 30 years, sekali dia punya tanah tak bagus, so membazir lah. Okay. So, the performance and nutrient status depend on soil texture. Okay. It has to be 35% clay, 35% uh, sand. So, that's already 75. Uh, soil slope, jangan lebih dari 60%. And then, uh, NPK, easy irrigation. Biasanya tak ada, tak, tak ada air pun dekat dalam ni, but maknanya at least ada hujan lah okay, macam tu macam tu macam tu okay so sorry classification ni mungkin you akan belajar uh, dari in, dalam kelas soal nanti it's okay don't worry about that and, and um, okay we're gonna pass that so this is soil classification so you boleh tengok dekat dalam peta ni Class 1 yang color coklat uh, dekat kalau dekat Melaka ni hmm adalah sikit so ada banyak ke area dekat Johor pun ada banyak area yang sesuai untuk tanam getah and then Melaka ni sembilan uh, Pahang ada sikit so basically tanah dekat Johor paling banyak yang suitable untuk tanam getah Okay, slightly suitable. Okay, class 3 or slightly. So, yang paling paling suitable is um, coklat ni. Followed by uh, blue ones. So, maknanya blue pun you boleh tanam dengan getah juga. Uh, pesisir, yang tan pesisir pantai ni nampak macam banyak sebab probably because of the mixture 30% uh, tadi tu. Uh, pasir tadi tu. Okay. So, macam tu lah. And then we go to varieties. And... Um, there are clones and seedling. Clone ni benda yang you 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 reproduce daripada pokok tu. Okay. Contohnya uh, budding. Budding ni maknanya you ambil dia punya bud tu. Putik daripada bunga tu sendiri. Uh, putik pokok tu. You tanam ke tempat lain. Ataupun you grafkan. You tampalkan ke tempat lain. So that's what we call uh, budding or grafting. Uh, for example, you ambil putik bunga. You pergi kat pokok lain, you potong sama size, you cucukkan, selitkan dekat situ. So, itu nama dia adalah budding. Ataupun kalau grafting ni, you potong empat segi dekat satu pokok. Uh, lepas tu, you, you potong lagi satu empat segi yang sama size, you tampalkan yang dari pokok A ke pokok B. So, that's what we call grafting. Okay, and then tissue culture ni daripada apa-apa bahagian lah yang nak reculture balik. And kalau seedling pula, semuanya grow daripada seed. Okay, so that is the difference between clone and seedling. So, tapi kebanyakan uh, getah ni, orang start daripada uh, ni lah, budding. Sebab nak cepat. Kalau seedling, dia lambat. Kalau budding ni, dia cepat sikit. Okay. And then leaf. Um, macam tu lah, that is the difference between uh, kalau leaf more shine, kalau seedling less shine. And stem is straight and cylindrical. Kalau seedling lebih cone and smooth. And, and sebenarnya kalau you pergi dekat uh, Rubber Research Institute RRIM macam tu. Uh, kalau dekat ladang dia, dia ada, ada ladang, uh, ada banyak ladang seedling tu. Satu lagi ladang untuk untuk buat budding. Maknanya you potongkan dia punya bud tu. 
you cucukkan dekat pokok anak pokok. So maknanya dia ada satu ladang untuk anak pokok, satu for the bug for bug untuk clone adalah lebih smoother and then seedling is rough and harsh. Then maturity period is faster for clone sebab dia dah besar and you terus ambil dia, dia cepat sikit. And yield pun higher for clone so that's why kita selalu ambil yang clone and bug recovery is also faster so that's why we prefer clones over seedling. Tapi kita masih perlukan seedling sebab seedling ni uh, sebagai pokok kalau kalau bahasa Melayu ni kita panggil pokok penanti. Kalau bahasa Inggeris ni kita panggil dia rootstock. Okay, rootstock ni tempat yang kita nak uh, tadi katakan ada graft tadi you akan graft kan tampalkan pada seedling tadi. Okay. Potong empat segi you tampal kepada seedling. So that is what it means by grafting. So, uh, characteristics of good rubber clone, uh, dia mesti vigorous, banyak uh, early maturity, cepat mat, cepat cepat matang, virgin but at first stepping, uh, wasn't, and cepat baik and high yield. Okay. And, uh, and also have good dry rubber content. Okay, so dia ada good dry rubber content. Okay, so ini adalah some of the clones that you have. Kita berehat sekejap, Azan. Okay. Continue balik, entity. And, mana tadi? Okay, so uh, ni ada uh, examples of some common rubber clones. So, kalau you nampak nama dia RRIM, that refers to uh, Rubber Research Institute Malaysia. Then you ada PB, Perang Besar, and CH for Cemara, and uh, LTC, Latex Timber Clone. Okay, uh, clone differentiation yang macam tadi tu. Uh, based on visual description of the ver uh, variation so macam tadi tu you ada bug yang halus bug yang kasar <coughs> so you boleh <coughs> you boleh differentiate between a uh, clone clone based on dia punya distinctive features <coughs> yang yang clone ni ada clone tu tak ada so um, uh, main features for identification you boleh tengok dekat leaf blade shape of blade uh, sama juga macam you tengok Durian, kalau durian ni macam panjang ke apa ke, saya so boleh tahu dia montong ke, dia, dia musangking ke, bawah dia ada bintang ke apa. So, uh, same thing. So, you are basically looking at, uh, for this case, you take look at the shape or leaf story, macam tu lah, crown shape, intensity, something like that. <coughs> so, uh, ni leaf, tak apa lagi, kita lepas yang ni. <coughs> Stem and leaf scar. Stem can be straight, crooked, uh, robust and leaning. So, kita okay, akan cukup pasir yang ni. Uh, okay, factors to be considered in the clone selection. Uh, suitable location and topography. Sesuai tak untuk ditanam. Soil properties. Adakah bagus sesuai ke tak? Wind velocity tadi tu, uh, like I said, kita tak boleh terlalu, uh, kalau dia punya angin tu kuat, so kalau boleh tak nak sebab nanti dia tumbang sebab you punya pokok ni dia straight. <coughs> But most of the time, uh, dia kuat lah, akar dia kuat, so insyaAllah mana, saya belum tengok lagi lah pokok uh, getah tumbang setakat ni. And then climate, especially rainfall pattern, dia kalau boleh biar dia yang macam biasa, uh, jangan terlampau banyak, jangan sikit sangat. The current and history of leaf or root diseases. Okay, this is normal. Kalau sebelum you tanam, tanam lagi, you have to make sure yang tanah tu tak ada disease yang akan affect rubber. And then, a resistance to diseases and heavy wind, bark thickness and... Uh, okay, bark thickness is uh, pun penting juga. Kalau dia lagi cepat besar, lagi bagus, but you nak... Uh, nak 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 na, tore it has to be at a certain girth okay girth 2 is uh, like i said ukul lilit <coughs> and yield potential ada banyak latex and wood so these are the things that you need to consider mesti banyak getah kalau tak banyak getah tak tak best and wood pun nanti kalau dah habis you boleh uh, boleh apa tu boleh gunakan untuk uh, furniture Suit tapping system that want to be applied and you have to use the system yang bagus lah. There are three uh, planting materials that is uh, approved by LGM. So, class 1, 2 and 3. 
Okay, class one uh, comprises of materials approved for large scale planting. Um, boleh <coughs> so the for example clone dia adalah sembilan puluh lapan sembilan puluh satu ah ni lah benda benda ni lah. Okay. So um, this one is cover only fifty percent of the total area of any estate or small holding. So biasanya um, Jangan jangan semua sekali lah. 50% sahaja of any estate ins or small holding. Next one you have class 2. All this. Uh, it is recommended that 3 or more of these clones uh, used to plant up to 50%. So maknanya you boleh tanam uh, kalau you nak tanam class 1 and class 2 uh, ni tadi lah. For example you ada uh, RRM908 50% dan lagi uh, RRM600 50% and other 50%. Okay. Um, another one is class 3 planting materials are divided into A, B, C and D um, the, uh, <coughs> you, sebelum you tanam lagi dia kena ada kena ada promise untuk good performance untuk large scale trial so barulah you boleh buat experimental planting kalau tak you tak boleh tanam ok and um, ok something like that Next one, uh, modern clones with uh, moderate scale performance are included in Division C. So, maknanya, uh, kalau tadi ada 1, 2, 3. So, kalau you rasa you nak tanam dulu, modern clone ni, you kena kaji dulu. Okay, baru sebab you tak boleh main mem memper dagangkan you punya masa depan 30 tahun. Another experimental clones of promising yield or desirable secondary characters with limited data is included in division T. So, tak cukup uh, data lagi. Okay. So, selection of uh, any of these are recommended for only not exceeding 15%, 15%. So, you tak boleh tanam banyak sangat lah sebab you pun tak tahu sangat dia punya dia punya outcome macam mana. Okay. So, let's take a look at this variety. So, uh, RRM 2001 class 2 so uh, biji getah dia rupa macam brown sikit bulat asing saya jumpa tak bulat macam ni and then yang ni dia punya uh, ni macam oreo sikit kalau biji getah dia 2004 <coughs> RRM 2004 and then kalau you tengok dia punya daun pun ada beza sikit ada shiny non shiny and then um this is 2005, class 2. Lain sikit biji dia, macam terpenyek sikit. Tadi bulat. And then, this is um, 2006, leaf blade dia lain. Uh, warna dia macam separuh lain, half macam double face macam tu. And then, we have uh, 2009, dia punya blade pun, uh, dia punya daun macam lain sikit. And then, we have uh, biji dia pun macam Lain sikit lah. So basically the way you differentiate is by looking at dia punya uh, Betul lah morphology dia macam mana Okay saya rasa uh, cukup sampai tu je dulu Sebab kita tak boleh banyak-banyak nanti awak pingsan